Hey everybody, welcome back for part two of my favorite 20 images of 2019. Uh, I did my first 10 in the previous video. So if you haven't watched that one, go back and do it. And uh, my favorite image of the year was in that first batch, uh, just chronologically. And then my second favorite image of the year is in this batch. So uh, you'll get to see hopefully a handful of good images in here that you like, and maybe you'll learn something. And uh, if nothing else, you'll learn about me a little bit about kind of how I go about things and what type of images I like and what I like about them. So uh, let's, let's get started here. This was uh, number 11 in chronological order. Uh, so this one was taken in June. And this is, it's kind of dark and mysterious. And at first glance, you might not even see the subject there, but uh, upon digging around a little bit, you'll see it. And it's a little uh, cross fox kit. So a cross fox is a red fox that has some uh, melanistic fur. So darker fur than normal red fox, but it is just still a red fox, just a red fox. But anyway, it was perfect because this darker, there was a darker one, a cross fox, and then a normal red fox kit in this den. And uh, this darker one happens to come out of this, the den opening here, just with the perfect kind of shadow light coming through being blocked by the trees. So it uh, really gave an opportunity for this dark kind of mysterious image of, you know, at first glance, what is this? But uh, once you find the fox in there, you can see it's coming out of its den there. And we've got beautiful dappled light coming through. And uh, just a super cute, cool looking subject. I had a blast photographing these guys. And this was my favorite image uh, of these, these fox kits. So this was taken with the Nikon D850, 600 millimeter lens, 1 640th of a second F5 and ISO 200. I had to expose, underexpose this big time compared to what the meter told me to make sure that these shadows stay really dark and that I don't blow out any of the highlights like of the, the bright fur or some of these bright rocks in the foreground. So I went dark on purpose on this one and it worked out great. Okay, next image. We are into July already here. This is obviously bison and rainbow. And this is just kind of a very like July type of scene here in the Tetons where we get these afternoon thunderstorms that roll through a lot. And uh, we get a lot of opportunities for rainbows and, you know, really dramatic light. And it can be fantastic out there. And the bison are one of the few subjects that are kind of out and about all day. Most of the critters in the heat uh, are trying to stay in the you know, in the woods or find shady spots or have gone up higher into the high country where it's cooler. So we do a lot of bison and pronghorn photography during that July, August time when it's warm here in the Tetons. So these bison were all laying down and the storm was happening and the rainbow appeared and they were all still just lying down. And, uh, you know, that was fine enough to have this rainbow and, and four bison lying down. But once this one stood up, it was like go time. That's that's the one that I wanted. And so this thing stood up and started moving to the left there. Uh, I just shifted my position a little bit, made a couple of frames, got the leg position that I wanted there and blammo, that, that was it. This was, this is a really high quality image because again, it was taken with a Fuji GFX 50 R and, uh, just really beautiful files come off of that sensor. And, and those lenses are spectacular. So this was uh, 1 60th of a second F8 ISO 200. And this was taken with the fantastic 100 to 200 millimeter lens. So lovely image, just summer in the Tetons and those afternoon thunder showers, beautiful rainbow, beautiful bison. It's great. Here we go on to another bison. This is late July. So the bison rut is just getting going here. And that's that's the star of the show in the Tetons in late July and early August is the bison rut. It can be awesome to photograph. This is one of the big, beautiful bulls, one of the big, you know, tough guys out there. And he had been rolling around in the mud uh, and really getting himself all caked up with mud. And I guess the lady bison like that or something. 
But uh, anyway, I had an opportunity here for a super clean, just perfect profile portrait of him. Uh, he's got that, you know, his fur's kind of caked down, matted down with a little bit of mud and uh, clean, bright background. It was just too good of an opportunity to pass up. So I shot this and it turned out just tack sharp, tons and tons of detail in there. I actually have a picture of this hanging upstairs in the master bedroom. And this is taken with a Nikon D850, the 600 millimeter f4 lens. This is 1 800th of a second f7.1 ISO 800. Obviously a black and white conversion there as well. Moving along, more bison. This is uh, the same day as that big bison. So I was just out there with this herd of bison for hours photographing them. And this little red dog, um, the baby bison that are still red, we call them red dogs. It was out with his mom just bounding around, playing, jumping, having a great time. And then the birds joined in and, you know, mom was just busy eating because she still got to feed, you know, the little red dog. Uh, giving it some milk and stuff. So she was more interested in in feeding, but it wanted to play. And so this was a playful image. Um, in a perfect world, the, compositionally here, I would have done things a little bit differently, but it happened like that, you know, and I didn't have a ton of time to react. But in a perfect world, I would have left more space to the left there for this baby bison to run into. I think it's crowding the frame a little bit there, but the gesture, the playfulness, the birds flying... Uh, they all kind of help to still make it, I think, an image that works, even though compositionally it's not ideal. But I, th I think it's good enough, and it, it made my favorite 20, one of my favorite 20 images here, just the playfulness of the bison. I think overrides the, the mist composition there. Uh, did I say this already? Nikon D850, 600 millimeter f4 lens. One twenty-five hundredth of a second f4 ISO 800. Here we go. I'm going to insert a lightning bolt sound in post there. That'll be cool. Probably not. But anyway, so here I mentioned that my favorite image of the year was in the first batch. This is my second favorite image of the year here. And I've been trying and trying and trying for years and years and years to get this photo. And it worked this year. As I mentioned, afternoon thunder showers rolling in uh, quite a few days during the summer. This was taken in early August. Uh, I was out photographing the bison rut and this storm was rolling in and I could see on my little weather app on my phone that there was lightning coming too uh, from the Idaho side. So I knew there was an electrical storm coming. And so I abandoned the bison and set up to hopefully get this exact shot. And it just happened to work out this day. I've tried this dozens and dozens of times and it hasn't ever quite worked out this well. So I was super duper psyched to make this image. Remember the, the super killer photo buzz? I know some of you remember that. And I had the super killer photo buzz after making this image. So this I just set up and waited for the storm to roll in and I, I had a lightning trigger on my Nikon Z7 and uh, set it to lowest ISO possible, which in this case is low one. It says ISO 31 there, uh, F11, and it gave me a half a second exposure. So that half a second exposure is important because when the lightning bolt strikes, you know, it, it actually can last for more than, even more than a half a second sometimes as those bolts are working their way around. But a half a second here worked out great uh, to capture this just perfect lightning bolt. I mean, I couldn't have placed this thing any better, but I, I set up the camera to compose it for, you know, just a standard kind of landscape shot with the Tetons the way I want them and the Grand Teton right there. Those clouds rolled in and they're dark and gnarly. And then the storm was clearing behind it. So we got this perfect band of light behind the Tetons. Uh, and that is so important to this photo because that band of light behind the mountains gives us the Teton silhouette. If that was all just dark storm clouds all the way out to the horizon there, we'd barely be able to see the outline of the Tetons. And I think it would have still been cool and I would have still been happy with it. But that uh, the clearing storm and getting that bright band of light behind it is 
just perfect. I couldn't have asked for anything better there. And then I had a few different images where there were some other, you know, different lightning bolts striking like over way on the right side of the frame or, you know, just in a not ideal place. But then I, you know, I was just watching, I was next to the camera and it was raining just a little bit. And so I was wiping off the, the lens once in a while. And, and then that bolt happened and I was like, Oh God, I hope I got that one. And I didn't chimp. I waited till the storm was over because I didn't want to miss if another cool lightning bolt came. But man, when I got home and I saw that bolt, I knew the one I was looking for because I saw it happen. And I just was, you know, really hoping that that image turned out and it, it did. And, uh, just psyched about this one. Love it. But it's still only my second favorite image. But fantastic image. I dig it. Here we go. This would be my third favorite image of the year. And uh, I honestly can't even tell you why. But it's a great gray owl. So I need to have a you know some good great gray owl photos in here. Uh, but this particular one was just really cool. You know how I mentioned simple earlier, that I like to make simple, clean images. And I think this is one that is simple and clean. And it's hard to get a simple, clean image of an owl in the forest because it's a forest. It's cluttered. It's got lots of branches and trees and light coming through in different spots. And it's just not as easy as it might seem. But this one was a very high contrast scene where the forest was, you know, in deep shade. It's a dark forest. This bird had come out to the edge of the forest and it landed on this tree that was in just direct sunlight. And uh, it was a beautiful photo. Um, and all, so all I had to do, all I had to do was move myself around to find the perfect background where there's literally nothing that had any light on it. So they're just, luckily there was a nice spot where it was just super dark shady forest behind this scene. Uh, and then I knew if I underexposed it, I, I had to keep you know, that bright tree and the bird from overexposing. And so I was negative on exposure compensation there. And that made the entire background just go black, which was great. Um, the, the color was just a little bit weird here, honestly. It kind of had like a peachy kind of color to it, just the way that evening light was coming through and uh, some of the haze in the air was giving it this weird peachy color. And I didn't like that. So I went black and white here and uh, again, I think that helped simplify it even more. It took the color. Oh, hi, Ruby. Yes, I'm, I'm making a video. You're cute. But it'd be great if you weren't in the video. Um, so anyway, I was making images. It was just perched there on the branch. But uh, then an eagle flew by, like way behind, maybe a mile away. It saw this eagle. I didn't see it, obviously. I was watching the bird. But then I could see it. And it kind of gets scared and it gave that gesture of it's, I don't know if scared is the right word, but it's definitely watching other raptors when they fly by. And you see that all the time with owls, but this one, and I turned and looked and there was a bald eagle way off in the distance. And so it kind of did this crouch and look, and it was watching intently that eagle. And that's the gesture that I needed. So this particular frame was better than the rest because the rest were just this beautiful bird sitting there on the branch, kind of looking here, looking there, looking at me, whatever. But when I got this one, it gave just a unique enough gesture uh, that this is the one image from that day that was the best, in my opinion. So anyway, this is the Nikon Z7 and the 500 millimeter PF lens, one two thousandth of a second f 5.6. ISO 1600. Now I didn't need two thousandth of a second for this static shot, but I was trying, doing my best to be prepared for the takeoff shot there of the bird. And it did take off and I got those shots, but, uh, it was kind of, it was heading off in the other direction. And so it was kind of an awkward with the bird in front of the tree and, uh, they were fine, but they, they didn't work as well as what I would have loved them to work. So this was the one. All right, we got another great gray owl. This one is at takeoff. So this is in October snowstorm and there's still some beautiful fall color on the leaves and the snow piling up on the branches. So the whole scene itself was just fantastic and the bird was sitting there hunting and um, I made some nice images of it just perched there. But when I, you could see it was about ready to take off. Um, I adjusted my, um, composition a little bit because I had been putting the bird up high in the frame and showing more of the fall foliage, the snow covered foliage. 
But when I saw it take off, I know those birds, their wings go straight up like that. I was shooting a vertical specifically to get this image when their wings come straight up and then they start flapping and come off. But I wanted this shot, so I shot it in a vertical orientation and left a ton of room above the bird so that I wouldn't clip those wingtips. And this was the resulting image. Uh, he's coming off to the side a little bit. I, in a perfect world, he would have been staring straight you know, down the lens. But uh, it's still a magical image with the beautiful snowfall and the fall foliage and those cute furry little legs. I just love seeing those furry legs, feathery, furry, you know what I mean. Anyway, this is a Nikon D850 and the 600mm f4 lens. One sixteen hundredth of a second f4 ISO 720. Here we go. This is the same day, but a different bird. Had two birds, two different owls that day. And uh, the snow has obviously melted. Let me see if this was taken before. Yeah, this was taken an hour and a half after that other one. So the snow that had been falling had already kind of melted off these leaves here. And uh, anyway, again, this bird was perched and it was a nice image there, but waiting for the takeoff, um, kind of moved, adjusted myself. So I had it kind of a, a frame of wraparound frame of fall foliage. And then when it took off, I made a series of images and uh, this was the wing position and the look that was the best. Again, I got those really cute feathery legs. He's looking straight down the barrel of the lens. Beautiful wing position framed up with those, with the fall foliage. Uh, I couldn't have done anything better there. Nailed it. And that doesn't always happen, but it's great when it does. So this was a Nikon D850, the same setup as before, the 600 millimeter F4, one two thousandth of a second F4 ISO 1100. Number 19. This was just a cool cloud formation. Just a cool cloud formation. This is the Tetons, the Grand Teton there, and just some radical clouds. So again, I, this isn't like a particularly compelling or difficult image to make, but I dig it. It's the Tetons. It's my home. And uh, to get a really cool, unique cloud formation like that and, uh, you know, some drama in the sky and fresh snow on the Tetons. This is in November. Um, simple image. This is with, taken with the GFX 50R and that lovely 100 to 200 millimeter lens, 1 80th of a second, F8 ISO 100. Um, again, not, a, you know, a, a classic like stunner of an image, but I love it and I think it's beautiful and it's, it's my home. So I dig it. And the final of the 20 favorite images of the year. Big, tough guy. Bull moose in black and white with the steam, the snorting the steam and snow covered antlers and snow on his back and got down low so I could shoot up to him to make him, you know, just the presence more, uh, more powerful than if I'm standing up tall, looking straight at him. Uh, and it looks like he's trying to kick my ass right here, but really what's happening, he's just busy grazing. So he's down, it's head down, head down, head down for a long time. And then once in a while, they just lift their head up to look around and you just have like click, click, and then they're right back down grazing on bitter brush again. So uh, it looks like he's trying to intimidate me here. He's not at all. He's just interested in eating out there. And so I'm laying down in the sagebrush uh, in the snow with my 600 millimeter lens making these images. And uh, so it's a little bit deceiving I, because then that's the, the, what I wanted. I want it to look powerful and intimidating, but he's not trying to intimidate me here. He's interested in eating. But the, the image itself is very powerful and intimidating. And that's what I wanted. Black and white conversion, similar to the reasons before of the Removing the color to simplify the image, uh, and the you know the color is a little bit distracting to me with some of the blues of the snow and the oranges and reds in the fur. Made it go away, boom! This is what I'm left with, and I love it. Turned out great. This would make a beautiful big print, and I do have a a space over there that could use a vertical print. So, hmm, I might do that.
But anyway, thanks for watching. If any of you guys are interested in any prints, of course, I, I, I sell prints. So just contact me or you can just buy them straight there on my website. Uh, prints of these or any, any photos you see of mine on Instagram or on the YouTube uh, channel. Just let me know. I love making prints for people. So anyway, I, I hope this was enjoyable, entertaining, uh, learning, whatever you get out of it. I hope you get something out of it. But thank you for watching. And um, I'll see you in the next video. I'm going to be leaving for Africa in about a week. I'm going to try and crank out a couple of videos before then to keep things rolling while I'm there. If I don't make that happen, then I'll see you when I get back from Africa. Um, I'm super psyched for that trip. And I'll be doing it again next February as well. So contact me if you're interested in getting on the list for Africa next February, okay? I appreciate it. Thanks for all the love last year and uh, the kind comments and the feedback and uh, meeting people in the field, saying hello. I love love saying hello to, to people in the field who watch the videos. Uh, so thanks again for all that. It was a great year, 2019 and 2020 uh, should just keep it rolling and be even better. And I hope it is for you as well. So thanks for watching. See you next time.